starts at 12. The 6 o'clock news starts right now. And new at 6 and off duty, Bear County Sheriff's deputy arrested this morning on assault family violence by choking slash strangulation charges by the San Antonio Police Department. Preliminary information indicated the deputy was involved in a verbal altercation with the complainant and that escalated to violence. Following his arrest, the deputy dismissed from the sheriff's office where he's been employed since February of this year. It is the ninth BCSO deputy arrested so far this year. Let's turn to the weather now. We've had rain off and on for a bit today. Take a look at this picture. We're getting reports of some storms out to the west. And there's a tornado watch out in West Texas as well. Can we be expecting any of that severe weather here, Adam? Well, we do have a uh, tornado watch in effect for locations just west of San Antonio. This is between I-35 and the Rio Grande and even northward up through the hill country. That means that conditions are favorable for a few isolated tornado spin-ups if we get the right thunderstorms to develop. And we're starting to already see some of the right thunderstorms popping up. We just don't have uh, tornado warnings associated with these right now. You look at the actual warnings that are in effect and... We have a severe thunderstorm warning, which is just west of Uvalde, basically through Brackettville toward Laughlin Air Force Base. That's where we have these stronger thunderstorms, and this is all that we have out there right now. But you can see a lot of lightning, and what's unique about these, the lightning actually spreads out way out ahead of the actual thunderstorm. So those of you in Uvalde and even Sabinal and Lakey, it's a good idea to stay inside right now. This is a unique supercell that's really throwing the lightning far away from the anvil of this thunderstorm. This storm over Brackettville does have the history of about tennis ball size hail associated with it as it moved through Del Rio, Laughlin Air Force Base, and even Brackettville area. There's a look at the radar over the past couple of hours. We're going to take the lightning off so you can just see the reflectivities, but that's all that we have out there at the moment. Our storm chances here in San Antonio increase as the evening wears on. I think between 10 p.m. and about 3, 4 a.m. is our peak potential here in town. More on the primary threats coming up. You, Adam. Could the search for 18 month old James Chides have come to a tragic end? San Antonio police confirming they found human remains at the far west side mobile home park where his mother lived, though they could not confirm the identity of those remains until the medical examiner conducts a death investigation. Our Garrett Berger on the scene now in the 7600 block of West Military. Garrett, I know that you visited with some family members earlier. What do they think is happening right now? Well, unfortunately, Steve, they are believing the worst right now. Now, the majority of the activity today happened around the uh, trailer home of James's mother. And as his great aunt told me, who else could it be? Baby James Chires was last seen with his mother, 20 year old Delani Chires, in early January in a drugstore just a few blocks away. Police found Delani Chires in March, but not James. She's since been indicted for tampering with evidence intent to impair. Police have searched the trailer before. And in Delani Chavez's arrest affidavit, they referenced blood found on a crib bed sheet. I can't understand it. Why the police, if they found the blood in the trailer, and then why they didn't start looking right away? You know, I think that was shabby work. You know, they should have started looking right away. It's not clear what prompted investigators to search the trailer again. The family said investigators did not tell them exactly what, where they found the human remains. Now, family members have mentioned that they've been doing their own searches. And actually, on Friday, they found some cell phones inside the trailer that prompted them to look nearby and found Delani Chiris's actual missing cell phone in a pathway near the trailer. Now, they turned those phones into investigators. It's not clear, though, if that's what led to the breakthrough or this most recent search. On the far west side, I'm Garrett Berncher. KSAT 12 News. We'll continue to follow that investigation. Thank you, Garrett. Police are currently investigating a shooting at an apartment complex that happened only a couple of hours ago. Police tell us they got a call about 4:10 p.m. about a shooting at an apartment complex in the 6200 block of South New Braunfels Avenue on the southeast side. According to police, two individuals fired several rounds at each other until the man who lived in the residence, he's age 50, age 47 rather, was shot in the left knee. He was then taken to the hospital for treatment. The person who shot him fled the scene. A man found dead in the middle of Sterling Drive this morning. That's near Martin Luther King Jr. Drive on the city's east side. And in this case full of questions right now, Katrina Weber reports, police are looking for answers. 
A call right at 4 a.m. brought San Antonio police to this neighborhood street. In the middle of it, they found a man dead from gunshot wounds. They say witnesses told them someone in a dark colored vehicle, possibly an SUV, took aim at him with very few words exchanged. Police say the man was walking along the sidewalk in the 500 block of Sterling when the vehicle pulled up. They say almost as soon as he leaned into it, someone fired at him with a rifle. Investigators found shell casings along the street, showing the shooting continued even as the driver sped off. Police say the victim may have been homeless, but was no stranger to the neighborhood. No one here was interested in talking to us, but police say neighbors did help them develop a basic picture of the victim. They say that they told them he was someone who was well known in this area and also seemed to be well liked. Why someone would want to kill him is just one question on investigators' minds. They did all they could to solve the case, collecting evidence and talking to people nearby. Still, they didn't come up with anything to lead them to the shooter right away. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine is back and in use here in San Antonio. WellMed has resumed appointments for the J&J &J vaccine at two vaccination sites. That's after federal and public health agencies recommended a pause on its use following reports that a handful of women, women suffered extremely serious but rare blood clots after getting the shot. But after a review, both the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, along with the FDA, determined the use of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is safe. COVID infection causes uh, clots in patients. Uh, it can occur in many parts of the body. Um, in this case, these were very specific types of uh, clots that occurred also with low platelet counts, which made it slightly unusual, which is one of the reasons why they called a pause so that they look at the data. The FDA has also determined the benefits from receiving the J&J &J vaccine outweigh any potential risks for adults 18 and older. WellMed recommends that recipients and caregivers review a fact sheet provided by the FDA. We have a link to that posted on our website at ksat.com. More than 8 million doses of the J&J &J vaccine have been administered. Time saver traffic right now. Let's go to 281 South at Loop 410 West. You can see the upper level there very slow going. Actually, as you look down at 410 itself, it's not too bad. But the ramp from 281 South to Loop 410 West very slow going at this hour. Not all that unusual. We don't know of any traffic accidents to tell you about. It's just the volume of traffic there. Food, games, entertainment, and the rodeo. It's back at Helotus. Organizers of the Helotus Cornival and PRCA Rodeo are expecting thousands of people to attend this weekend's event. But first, we're taking you behind the scenes. Tiffany Huertas has that look and talks about what safety measures are being implemented. Preparations are underway for the biggest event in Helotus. I've been coming to Helotus for the, the Corny Bowl and Rodeo my entire life. Erica Gray says she looks forward to this every year. It's a one of a kind experience because it's not like a big, huge rodeo. It's more personable. You get to sit close to the arena. Last year, the event was canceled due to COVID-19. David Gray, the president of the Helotus Festival Association, says local nonprofits took a big hit. We support all the local nonprofits in Helotus. So a lot of the nonprofits did not receive that income that they normally receive because we didn't have the event. But the family friendly event is back on this year. Masks are re recommended, they're not required. Uh, keep your social distancing the best you can. You know, it's now it's three feet instead of six feet. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says everyone, fully vaccinated or not, should keep wearing masks at crowded outdoor events. Gray says there's space to social distance here. It's 48 acres outside. Hand sanitizing stations can be found throughout the grounds. Gray says they're disinfecting different areas, including these chairs. This year we're expecting 100,000 people. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News.
All right, look outside with live cam. It's a gray picture out there. We're seeing big clouds from this view, but a lot more to look at on the radar, Adam. And some things to be concerned about on the radar. Uh, yeah, especially far west of San Antonio along Highway 90 west of Uvalde. That's where we have the main activity now. And we can take a look at that here on our radar system. And this is the animation over the past hour. The yellow polygons indicate the ongoing severe thunderstorm warnings. This is Brackettville and just outside of Uvalde. But we have confirmed reports of golf ball to tennis ball size hail within these two storms that are moving to the east. Of course, these storms change and modify as they head eastward. We'll track this out for you and talk about even more development expected into the night. We're not expecting just a one and done type of evening ahead of us. As the evening wears on, the showers and storms be should become more widespread and numerous coming to an end by sunrise. Primary threats and another shot at rain coming up. All right, thanks, Adam. Still to come here at six, it's been a stressful year for everyone, and that stress can have physical side effects. What to know if you're trying to get pregnant? April marks Child Abuse Awareness Month, an issue that has been a long-standing concern in the San Antonio area, but it's rarely an isolated issue. In today's case at Community Town Hall, our panel of experts say they not only saw a rise in child abuse cases due to the pandemic, but also domestic violence. And oftentimes the two go hand in hand. Angela White, the CEO of Casa San Antonio, responded to an example of a young boy witnessing his mother's abuse at the hands of his father. We really have got to think about the impact of that young man then growing up and the circle, the cycle of violence, the cycle of generational harm. And we have to break it. Other risk factors for child abuse include substance abuse, poverty, and mental illness. The panelists shared resources that focus on helping families that may be experiencing those challenges. You can watch the full discussion on KSAT.com or the KSAT TV app. If you've been thinking about getting pregnant, but like almost everyone, have been stressed because of the pandemic, it might be time to learn some better coping mechanisms. If not, you could have a higher probability of giving birth too early. Ursula Perry reports that a team of researchers has found a woman's stress level, even before she gets pregnant, can have serious consequences for her baby. Smoking, excess weight, high blood pressure, or diabetes during pregnancy, all are known risk factors for premature birth. For years, stress has also been on the list, but now researchers are looking at the impact of stress before conception. Moms who were experiencing heavy stress before they even became pregnant had shorter gestation, shorter pregnancies. <laughs> Professor Dunkel Shetter and her research team at UCLA surveyed 360 mothers about their generalized stress or perceived stress levels. They also asked about environmental stressors, including money worries, job loss, lack of food, parenting challenges, and interpersonal violence. What they found is that a woman's stress up to four years before conception impacted the length of her pregnancy. So it certainly is surprising to be able to show that you can go that far back and affect an outcome of a nine month pregnancy. The researchers found that women who were exposed to a lot of stress and very little stress prior to their pregnancies had the shortest term pregnancies. While those who just had moderate amounts of stress seemed to be able to cope better, their pregnancies were the longest. In any event, researchers say this might be a good indication that if you're thinking about getting pregnant, you need to do a mental health check. Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News. All right, as we're doing this newscast, we're hearing our weather team react to what you guys are seeing on the radar. There's a lot to keep track of, and of course, we're worried about the potential of severity here, Adam. Yeah, and already have two severe thunderstorms out there west of San Antonio along Highway 90. We're talking Uvalde, Sabinal points westward through Brackettville. But overall tonight for everybody, let's get to the primary threats. Straight line wind gusts, 60 to 70 miles per hour, large hail. We're talking golf ball size, some locations even larger. It'll be localized, but there is that potential. And then we also have that you know, moderate to medium risk of even a few isolated tornadoes spinning up out there. I do want to show you this. This is the view from Kerrville. Look at these cumulonimbus mammatus clouds. These are way far offset from the actual thunderstorm that's approaching Sabinal right now. But 
the anvil, the top of the cloud that shoots out ahead of it. Well, that's where you get these bubbly looking Mammatus clouds. And actually, we're seeing a surprising amount of lightning getting kicked out far away from the center of this storm. Uh, Myra said they heard us, you know, talking in the weather center because we don't see this very often. This anvil is very electrified. You can see the bubbly clouds there, the Mammatus from Kerrville. But from the main part of the storm, I mean, this is shooting, dropping lightning 70 miles from the center of the storm toward Fredericksburg. Kerrville, a recent strike, 60 miles from the center. Uh, city of Bandera, well, the mid city of Medina, basically, about 40 miles from the center of the storm, but still getting little lightning strikes around there. So even if you're just underneath that anvil and you have those bubbly mammatus clouds, good idea to stay inside. Every once in a while we get these bolts from the blue that go way out ahead of these storms. And this is one of those unique cases where they go very far out ahead of the storms. I'll turn the lightning off so it doesn't look like we have a bunch of whiskers on the screen right here. I know it can be distracting. This is the radar over the past hour. These are the supercells moving eastward, one following the other. A history of tennis ball size hail associated with these storms. It does look like just north of Uvalde is where this is tracking. Sabinal, it looks like, I think if we're on track here still, it should get to you by about, it's moving at 40 miles per hour, it should get to you well, by, I would say, closer to 6.50 p.m. in Sabinal. Now, if this remains intact and these continue their eastward motion and don't fall apart, we could potentially see uh, some of the effects, including heavy rainfall and large hail on the west side of Bear County by closer to, to 8 p.m., closer to 8 p.m., whatever's at least left over from this, even if it's just rain, could make it to the Western Bear County closer to 8 p.m. But that's all we have out there on the radar screen right now. I do wanna show you uh, just the hail track associated with this. There you see that Del Rio through Laughlin Air Force Base, Brackettville. Now it looks like a lot of that's heading toward the Sabinal area and even uh, possibly even clipping Concan, but that's where we have the severe thunderstorm warning that's in effect. I mentioned as the evening wears on, our rain chances and storm chances just continue to climb every hour here in San Antonio with the primary threat time mainly between about 10 p.m. and about 3 or 4 a.m. tomorrow morning. And then by sunrise, the activity really comes to an end and we actually start to clear out a bit by tomorrow afternoon. As for rainfall accumulations, Again, it's done by about sunrise tomorrow. Between now and then, we could easily see one to three inches in the hill country, maybe even two to four inches in parts of the hill country as well. East of I-35, not as good in terms of rainfall potential today, but this upper system is going to hang around and it's going to hang around through the weekend. That bodes well for Saturday. If you miss out on the rain today, Friday, some scattered activity, but Saturday is looking more promising for some fairly scattered to widespread showers. Here are the details tomorrow, 70 in the morning, 80 by the afternoon. Temperatures, not a big deal, no big changes in the days ahead. Just a little bit cooler Friday and Saturday. And I mentioned we're starting after tonight, we're focusing on that Saturday time frame, not necessarily for severe weather, but what could be some really good soaking rain for many folks. All right, we'll check back in in a bit on those storms. Thanks, Adam. All right, are the Spurs looking for revenge tonight, <laughs> Larry? You would have to imagine they are the way Miami shut them down a yeah. week ago tonight in the second half, particularly in the fourth quarter. But you know, we're going to talk about DeJounte Murray. He is fifth in the NBA among guards and rebounding. I mean, he just has a knack for getting the ball. And Judson High School held a blood drive today in honor of Bryce Wisdom. Coming up. did not hold shoot around this morning ahead of their game at the Miami Heat. The Silver and Black will look to push their winning streak to four straight and they'll have to do so without Derek White who's out with a sprained right ankle and Pop said moments ago during pregame that quote, I don't expect him back this season, end quote. In the Spurs overtime win Monday night at the Wizards, DeJounte Murray grabbed a whopping 17 rebounds, a new career high for DJ. Just want to win the game. Uh... I was trying to do whatever it takes to win the game, you know, and I know, you know, being able to have the ability to affect the game in, in all ways uh, possible, you know, it, it helps your team. So, you know, that's all I was. I was trying to be gritty and, and help my team win. 
Heat will play the uh, Spurs tonight at 7 in Miami. Judson High School held a blood drive today in honor of former football player Bryce Wisdom, the young man who battled a rare form of kidney cancer known as Wilms tumor. He passed away in July of 2020 at the age of 17. Thanks to his huge smile, Bryce captured the hearts of our community and beyond during his fight. He frequently needed blood platelets during his 19 weeks of aggressive chemotherapy treatments. Today he would have turned 18 years old, so donating blood on Bryce's birthday is a great way to honor his life by saving others. It's just amazing. Uh, the blood that is being collected today is just, it makes me happy because I know what we went through with Bryce and, this, and uh, you know, the, uh, the amount of blood that, that they had ready for him. It, it was just, we didn't know how long it was going to take because they didn't have a lot. So to walk in here and hear that we had 145 people that signed up to give blood in honor of Bryce, I, I have no words. I'm just humbled. I'm just humbled and just so appreciative of everybody and being so selfless to help others and save others' lives. Jetson ISD will be holding two more blood drives to honor Bryce, who would have been a senior at Jetson High. The next blood drive will be from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. on May 11th at Wagner High School. And the third one is from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. on May 13th at Veterans Memorial High School. San Antonio FC will kick off its 2021 season this Saturday at home with the Colorado Springs Switchbacks Football Club. Last season, SAFC won Group D with 33 points, but lost 1-0 to New Mexico United in the first round of the playoffs. During training camp, head coach Alan Marcina has talked about the team establishing an identity. Goalkeeper Matt Cardoni says they've worked hard on building that identity during camp. So what do they want their identity to be? We want to be a high intensity team. We want to bring bring the focus for for the entire match. Uh, we want to defend hard. We want to score a lot of goals. Um, it's all about intensity and focus. SAFC will host Colorado Springs this Saturday, 7:30 p.m. at Toyota Field. Fans will be allowed approximately 3,200 to start off the season. In Carnet Word Baseball at Texas last night, Zach Zubia goes deep to left field, but Jordan McFarland robs him of the go-ahead two-run shot, grabbing the ball over the wall. ESPN Sports Center ranked that number five on their top ten plays today. Texas won five to three, but Jordan McFarland made Sports Center. I don't even think his teammates in the bullpen realized he caught it. You see him like looking around for the yeah, ball. I want to know how his ribs feel. Ooh, yeah. yeah, that's pretty hard. There's padding, but it's not <laughs> enough. Yeah. Thanks, Larry. You got it. We'll be right back. It is a word that we are hearing in the legislature in Austin, but it's not just Austin. It's around the country. That word is transgendered. We are joined by Paige Davis, who has a personal stake in this discussion. And Paige, when I say transgendered to you, what does that mean to you today? And what did it mean to you just a few years ago? Thank you. Just to reiterate, my name is Paige Davis and my pronouns are she, her. That's a really great question uh, because I think that word is absolutely being tossed around much more often these days than previously. Um, probably because we have so many bills in the legislature percolating uh, that are anti-trans. So I'm glad that you asked three years ago versus today. So three years ago, Paige Davis is very different than today, Paige Davis. Three years ago, Paige Davis was mortified when her son came out as transgender because the only narrative I had uh, to inform my understanding of what it means to be transgender were really born of false characterizations, um, usually on um, media and also within pop culture and, and all the associations were very negative um, so so i again I, i'm not proud of it but i was mortified and i was ashamed and i was embarrassed that was my truth um, today's page um, is the page that has spent countless hours researching and reaching out and getting support from experts in the lgbtq um, IA plus community that have helped me to change my narrative. Whenever we are in the absence of truth, we tend to go to fear, but truth has the wonderful ability to erase that fear and just to create enlightenment. So today Paige is incredibly proud of her transgender son and uh, I, absolutely 100% support his journey and being his authentic self. 
And I, I want to mention, Paige, throughout this interview, we've got some resources, some information uh, for people who may be in the situation you found yourself in three years ago, not really knowing where to turn for help. So we're going to share those as we continue our Great. discussion here. And you talk about how you now have the benefit of experience. So looking back, is there something you know now that you wish you had known three years ago when your child approached you with this information? Well, absolutely. Um, I wasn't very supportive in the beginning. And again, that was my own fault um, for buying into false narratives um, that uh, that I grew up with. Um, I was in denial um, because that seemed like a really good place to be in the midst of an existential crisis where all of my values and, and beliefs were being challenged. I wish that I had trusted him more to tell me exactly what was going on, but to really listen. And I didn't really listen. I heard him. I didn't I didn't want to listen. And so I think that in retrospect, if I could have been more supportive from the get go, that would have potentially changed our journey. But and at the same time, we've had a very positive journey because no one has to go through this alone. Um, being transgender is not bad. It's not wrong. It's not um, an aberration. Um, it just is. And so once we can understand what it means to be transgender, it's really just not a big deal. They're just humans like you and I. They're just people. But that's not how a lot of people view it. I mean, you've run into the fact, I mean, you told me when we talked earlier this week that you've lost friends over your journey with your son. Well, absolutely. And, and what I want to let everybody know, and again, this is my full transparency, um, I had very negative misconceptions about what it meant to be transgender. And so it makes sense for the general population to perhaps have some of those beliefs as well, simply because those are the only narratives that were really available to us. And I think that it's, I'm sorry, go ahead, Myra. Well, Paige, I, I just, I, I know that we only have a few minutes here and we're, we're barely scratching the surface, but for a lot right. of people, when they hear about issues surrounding transgendered, it's in a place like headlines or seeing what's playing out in the legislature. And, you know, no one needs to tell you how polarizing some of those issues can be, but despite how people feel about politics or their, their opinions on policy, I'm just curious what it's like for you as a mom to witness other people weighing in on this deeply personal topic that's obviously very emotional for you and, and can be so controversial in big public spaces. That's correct. Whenever I uh, delivered my testimony to, uh, to Congress last week, my main message was asking legislators to not make decisions that are so vastly important and critical that have a huge impact on our youth without being well-educated on what it means to be transgender. Um, again, there are a lot of misconceptions and um, it would be irresponsible for legislators to do so. Um, we've made all the decisions that we've made um, with a lot of thought and, and they're well-informed decisions. I would just encourage people to, to maybe take a few minutes and just learn something about what it means to be transgender. It's not it's not wrong. It's not bad. Uh, but until you confront your own false narratives, you will not be able to evolve and to accept transgender people for who they are. Paige, I want to ask you one final question here, and I, I want to sure. remind people we're putting up resources for, for people, um, you. you know, if they need help as we're having this conversation. Did you feel and do you feel like when you talk to whether it's the, the legislature in Austin or in this interview right now that you're fighting for your son's life and people like him? Absolutely. I can't um, speak for every trans person, um, but I can speak to the fact that well documented that suicide rates are exponentially higher for for the trans community. And when we have bills that seek to criminalize parents for helping their, their transgender youth receive gender affirming care, um, that's, that's scary and it's personal because I'm not willing to lose a child. 
I'm not willing to lose a child over anything. And so some of these bills and in, in, you know, percolating throughout the legislature are incredibly scary and, and worrisome. My best advice is for people to just become informed. There's so many resources online. You can start at PFLAG, sanantonio.org. We have a helpline, we have a support group. Just find a way. There are people out there like me who can help you, who can, who can guide you because I've had wonderful mentors who have guided me. Paige, thank you so much for your time, for sharing insight, your perspective on this very deeply personal topic. You talk about your desire for people to learn. I hope that's what we have helped some people do in these last few minutes. Thanks for being me with too. us. Me too, me too. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Paige. Let's continue this conversation down the road. We'll be right back. Authorities at a New York airport arrested a man caught trying to smuggle nearly three dozen live birds in his clothes. Officials say customs agents at JFK Airport pulled the man from Guyana aside for an examination. That's when they say they found 35 live finches stuffed wow. inside hair rollers sealed with netting, all hidden underneath his clothing. The man said he'd been paid to smuggle the birds into the U.S., and according to authorities, he was charged with unlawfully importing the finches. It's not immediately clear if anyone else has been linked to this scheme. I wonder what happens to the birds now. That is a big question. 35. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Uh, it is 87 degrees out there. It has been warm. It has been humid, and I'm guessing that's what's fueling some of the storms that we're seeing out there, Adam. Yeah, and even just the fact that our sky cleared out and we had some sunshine this afternoon, that's fueling the instability in our atmosphere. You know, west of San Antonio, bearing down on Uvalde now, we have a severe thunderstorm. Uvalde, you should have that uh, probably by about 725, maybe a little sooner than that. I'd say closer to about 715 p.m. We're going to have a full comprehensive update coming right up. To the buzz and Amazon expanding its home grocery delivery straight into the garage. The online retailer says people can now choose to allow delivery people to leave their groceries orders, leave their grocery orders inside of their garages. The service is available just to prime members in more than 5,000 cities, including San Antonio. Always on the fence about this. For this to work, you must have a Wi-Fi enabled or smart garage door opener. You would make Amazon your Amazon order and then select key delivery at checkout. The driver then uses a handheld Amazon scanner to open your garage door on delivery day. Now, Amazon says the driver will only be able to access the garage door one time. Customers are notified about the delivery in real time. It's a lot of stuff to go through. Yeah, absolutely. Spotify has launched a paid subscription platform for podcasts. Podcasters will be able to mark certain episodes or bonus content as subscriber only. Spotify says creators will receive 100% of the revenue for the next two years. You have a podcast, right? Case That Explains has a podcast. Yes, That's it's right. You. But starting in 2023, it plans to introduce a 5% fee. The premium podcast will reportedly have three payment tiers at three, five or eight dollars per month. Competing platform Apple announced it was launching its own premium subscription only service last week. It's not just me. It's the it's Myra perfect. cast. <laughs> Grab your favorite mask and cape. Today is National Superhero Day. Batman, Captain America, Wonder Woman and the Hulk among the more popular characters. They're fictional, sure, but Many of them serve as role models for kids as they serve and protect the public while battling evil. And of course, there are some non-fictional superheroes in the world, including police officers, firefighters, teachers, medical professionals. People can honor the day by taking their favorite superhero a meal and thanking them for all their efforts. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of real life superheroes to thank over the last year. Absolutely. All right, the weather situation outside. Adam, I'm curious if the storms are seen to the west will hold together all the way into the metro area. Well, right now I do have reason to believe that they will. I mean, of course they will modify and change a bit. Doesn't mean that we'll have the same impacts that they had out, say in Brackettville and Del Rio, but we're already seeing a little more development out there as well. And we are anticipating our own activity here in town. Let's go to the graphics really quickly. This is in Brackettville. It's kind of tough to see, but if you look at the ground, it's white. That's because of the hail that fell and it made the 
the ground looked like it just had snowed out there. OK, so that's Brackettville. Here are the primary threats tonight. Straight line wind gusts and hail. Those are the highest threats. Wind gusts up to 60, 70 miles per hour. Hail potentially a golf ball or even bigger. I mean, we've already seen some hail up to the size of tennis balls west of San Antonio, Del Rio to Brackettville area, and especially west of I-35. You know, we just can't rule out the isolated tornado spin up or two through the nighttime hours. Severe thunderstorm warning. This is for Sabinal, Uvalde, Concan area, and this is for until 715 PM. Now I do anticipate this to make it to Uvalde even before seven o'clock here and probably within the next uh, 10 minutes, a little bit of hail moving its way into Uvalde. That's what we're anticipating here. This purple area that indicates the likelihood of hail out there outside right now and uh, with that hail, of course, could be some damage, and this is heading right toward Uvalde. We have this product right here, which indicates the white showing where we most likely have the hail within these storms. So these white areas kind of indicate there's the hail, there's the hail, and this is all far west of San Antonio at the moment. But this type of activity will further develop and push eastward through the night tonight. Again, these white pockets on here, that indicates where we uh, likely have the hail at this moment. And we're seeing some development out ahead of this main of these main supercells. We're seeing a little bit of development in Hondo as well in central Medina County, and this will likely continue to develop and we'll see that further development through the night. This is the past hour. It's basically right along the Highway 90 corridor now and even a new severe thunderstorm warning. This would be the third for the Del Rio area and Laughlin Air Force base area. OK, that's a new warning that just came in. Another round of straight line wind gusts and the potential for the large hail as well. I'm going to turn on the lightning because we're seeing some lightning strikes way out in advance of these storms. I mean, unusually far out in advance. We're talking toward Kerrville, Bernie and Comfort. We're starting. We're seeing the lightning strikes out ahead of it. The atmosphere is very unstable. Our primary time frame here in San Antonio is likely between about 10 p.m. and 4 a.m. give or take. Should that development stay together that we have out there right now, should they uh, remain intact? We'll probably see them around 8 o'clock is when we would see those on the west side of San Antonio. Otherwise, our future cast gives you a general idea through the night tonight, more development. We are not expecting this to be one of those just one and done situations multiple storms cycling through with the potential of the large hail and of course straight line winds into tomorrow morning by sunrise. We're expecting this to basically be out of here out of here. A few lingering showers possible, but that would really be it. And tomorrow, despite the lingering showers in the morning, by and large, we'll have a decent amount of sunshine. High temperature right near 80, a north wind at 10 to 15. If you miss out on the rain today, I mean, we could be talking two to four inches in parts of the hill country and locations west of I-35. But if you miss out on it today, Friday's another shot, Saturday an even better chance. We have right now some uh, high hopes and confidence into Saturday. All right, lots to keep track of this week. Thanks, Adam. In case you missed it, coming up next. Here's today's In Case You Missed It. It is Wednesday, April 28th. San Antonio police are looking for three people connected to a shooting on the northwest side at a gas station. They say a man shot in the leg at the Circle K on Hebner and Eckert Roads. The man's girlfriend told police that her boyfriend was pumping gas when they were approached by several people. Yeah, something was said. Someone in the group fired shots. Police say the woman ran inside for help. She was not hurt. The man taken to the hospital. The search for those suspects continues. Well, the search continues for three migrant teens missing from the shelter at Freeman Coliseum Expo Hall. Officials from the Department of Health and Human Services say the teens left the shelter during the week of April 12th and have not been seen since. Kathy Crosby, an external affairs officer with HHS, said, quote, on rare occasions, youth leave the shelters without permission. In each circumstance, authorities are notified. Children are usually found and returned and then typically transferred to another facility, end quote. A man is dead and San Antonio police are looking for his killer. According to SAPD, 
The man was found in the middle of Sterling Street on the city's east side around four in the morning. Witnesses say that he was walking along the sidewalk when someone in an SUV drove up beside him and shot him with a rifle. At last check, no one's been arrested and that man has not been identified. Another San Antonio staple has fallen to the coronavirus. Lulu's Bakery and Cafe located just north of downtown at North Main and East Euclid Avenue tempor temporarily shut down in March of last year due to the pandemic, but now the local food icon is closing its doors for good. The restaurant is placing all of its kitchen equipment up for auction to be sold off in a liquidation sale. For more details on that closure, you can head over to KSET.com. I want to give you an update here. The Tornado Watch now includes San Antonio, Bear County, New Braunfels, San Marcos, down toward Pleasanton and even Floresville. So we've expanded this tornado watch eastward. This means conditions in the atmosphere are favorable for a few brief and isolated spin ups as we go through the night. Should we see the right type of storm? So assuming what we have out west now that's moving through Uvalde County and about to hit Sabinal. Get ready, Sabinal. This is on your doorstep. Assuming that remains intact, that would make it to Castroville and basically the edge of Bear County by about 745 p.m. And then I would estimate the 1604 on the west side of town. We're talking Alamo Ranch, SeaWorld area, probably around 8 p.m. Also, there could be some further development out in advance of that. And we are expecting more through the night. We're going to see you at 10.